Journey through the stories that define the artists playing Bonnaroo. Who are they? What are they? What will you see? The what? Which bands? This year? That matter. Yay. With Brad Steiner and Barry Corner. Weinstein, who's taken some time out of his incredibly hectic schedule to sit down at Camp Nut Butter with us, even drink our moonshine right there on our couch. We talked how he got started with Bonnaroo, how Bonnaroo has evolved. We even dipped a toe in the Cardi B pool, and I showed him my ochre tattoo. Backstage at Bonnaroo with Ken Weinstein from Big Hassle Media. Very rewarding conversation that we had with Ken. Check this out. I don't have a title. I don't know, but I'm, I'm looking tired. at the two best head of hair in all of Bonnaroo. <laughs> nice. yes. Three, sorry. Three, I forgot I, to include Barry. But <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you basically I'm on Croft. run publicity. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I own an independent PR company. Big Hassle. Big Hassle Media. And uh, I, have, uh, I was approached in um, 2001 by this company that I had never met before called Superfly. They were based in New Orleans, and um, I was working a band called the North Mississippi All Stars at the time. I pardon my voice. Sunday, at bon- Sunday at Bonnaroo. Sure. I was working with North Mississippi All Stars on Shake Hands with Shorty, and uh, we were crushing it. We were getting so much press, and they were opening up for Galactic at the time. They were opening up for Galactic. So Galactic, who's based out of New Orleans, obviously, they had a manager uh, based in San Francisco who they had just parted ways with. So, and they hired these new guys to be their managers. Um, Superfly. They're like, dudes, I don't know who's doing the press for the North Mississippi All-Stars, but find that guy. Oh, nice. So I get a call uh, from Rick Farman and Jonathan Mayers, uh, who are both New York guys, and I'm in New York. And they came up. Uh, they're like, we, they, call, they, they reached out to me, and they're like, hey, we work with Galactic now, and you work with the All-Stars, and we'd like to talk to you about doing their press. We're going to be in New York next week. Let's have lunch. So this is in 2001. And um, wow. uh, I said, yeah, great. So we met at a restaurant called Communion on Broadway and 22nd Street. And we were having a great lunch. At the very end of the lunch, it was really a fun lunch. We, had, we were really cl- clearly clicking. It was just, you know, the, we're all like, no, no, we all get along. It's right. great. We still do. Right. But um, at the end of the lunch, they go, hey, so just throwing it out there. We're thinking of starting this summer festival. Uh, we don't know what it's called yet. We don't know where it's going to be held. But you seem pretty cool. Uh, like, would you maybe want to work with us on it? And I'm like, I've never done an event before. I've never worked on any event wow. PR before. And uh, they said, well, we've never thrown an event before. And I'm like, well, cool. Let's do it together. <laughs> They're like, done. So in, uh, in my, uh, I have a file on my computer. It's called proposals where I keep all my proposals. And I do it by year. And in 2001, there's still a proposal in my computer that says summer festival. Summer festival. So, wow. It's, it's the it's 2001 called- part that's blowing my mind. Yeah. So y'all put this together in a year. They had already been working on it. I, okay. You know, PR is usually the last part of the puzzle. Okay. It's kind of like the health permit. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so. Oh, wait, we need wait, that? We need that. You need a health oh, permit. You yes, serious? you do, ladies and gentlemen. Um, uh, wow. Got to keep it safe for the fans. This. They So they were ready to think about PR at that time. And um, shortly thereafter, we were in a uh, email uh, chain about what should we name this thing and eventually they tell me where it's being held 
Next thing you know, we're announcing it and putting it on sale, and shit sold out in 16 days. <laughs> right, right, with no... <laughs> and we're like, what didn't is... Didn't spend a penny, right? No, Except for no you, I assume. Must have been well, a really good PR no, firm. <laughs> <laughs> right, no, see, that's the thing. No traditional advertising. Yeah. Um, and then they put up another 10,000 tickets, and we sold out in a day. Wow. So in 17 days, at that time, we sold out, I believe, I want to say, 60,000 tickets. And then we sold out the next 10,000, so we were 70K that first year. The thing about that time period is, um, and it's hard for a lot of people to relate to this, but, you know, the internet was just kind of coming around, and it was getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and what we have to realize, of course, is that Fish, before there's even a Bonnaroo one, has had six festivals, has thrown six festivals, uh, with no ecosystem to support it. That was Fish's brainchild, and they're like, let's do this, you know, we think we can make this happen, and, you know... Um, Clifford Ball is born out of nothing, just a brain, just a random thought, and a but a, a fairly good sense that th- this could work because people like to gather and people like to commune, right? Um, and uh, like-minded, you know. Let's 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 bring together people who love live music, who love to be around each other and support each other, and you know. So there's a commu- There was a community after six fish festivals. There was a community that AC Entertainment and Superfly knew that they could tap into. And there was also, by the way, a staff that had thrown these fish festivals. There was an idea that that this thing could potentially work. What we have to, again, realize there's not really any internet. The internet's not what it is today. Right. So word of mouth, bands and fans at that point in time were talking and in ways and, and speeds unknown to mankind before. And you know, it was rapid fire. It just like it was wildfire. Just like as soon as people found out about it, one told the other, told the other, told the other. There were all these chat rooms, quote unquote. That's what. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Chat rooms. So. Um, it's not a Reddit thread. Wait a second. Exactly. That's not a Reddit. There was <laughs> pre-Reddit PR. Pre-Reddit. Yeah. It, it was an incredible thing to behold, and I will still. I can st- literally. Right now, I'm closing my eyes. I am on the main stage. Trey Anastasio, day one, and I'm standing with the partners, Ashley Caps and the four Superfly guys, Superfly guys, Rick Farman, Rich Goodstone, Jonathan Mayers, and Kerry Black, and they are holding up a glass of wine, and we're looking out. Wow. We're looking out on the main stage. Trey's about to go on, and it's like, good Lord, what have we built? <laughs> and it was a big holy shit moment. And uh, I'm, get, uh, I'm getting chills. I'm getting chills thinking about it right now because it was seriously like, oh, my God. It's really cool. And, and it, it start, all started from people who were just like throwing some stuff up against the wall, too. It was There was a sense of throwing stuff against the wall. Again, there were six fish festivals before this. There was a, there was a fan base who liked doing this uh, 10 miles away from humanity. You know, I well, mean, I'm sorry, 10 hours away from humanity. You know, there was, there was, an, there was a staff that had done it before. The, this had been built. Uh, right. And I think, I want to say that Bonnaroo is... A lot of fish festival, a lot of jazz fest, and with a touch of Glastonbury. That's the DNA in my mind. Huh. There's the European festival, but jazz fest informed this festival in a big way. Um, and without a doubt, you know, fish. Uh, without you know, you just have to bow. At, and 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 in USA Today, Tennessean story, you know, Rick Farman and Ashley Caps do say as much that you know fish. Those fish festivals were the inspiration in but a lot of ways. That's yeah. something that Ashley has said to me over the years. And, and to clear something up, every, you still hear people say it's not what it used to be. You know, it's, it started as a jam band and it changed. But he uh, he has always said, you guys went that route because those folks would camp. The idea was to start there and then build it into basically what it's become, right? I don't think you had the vision then of what it is today but you knew you wanted to broaden it and make it beyond you can't just really be a jam band festival every single year exactly. and have much sustainability i i wouldn't think from the level that it's gotten to now i mean if it was just fish and tray and and, and panic every year i'd be here but i don't know about, I don't know about everybody else right that's all that counts baby <laughs> so so uh he doesn't spend any money in center room so i don't know how much it counts uh, 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 uh. <laughs> no t-shirts nothing a couple dollars <laughs> Couple dollars. Well, here's so. What I really want, the point I'd like to take out of that, the most, what, what's really incredible about Bonnaroo, uh, is its fans, and we could not be here without them, and they are the most special people. They are full of open heartedness and love and kindness, and uh, they are the most open, open minded, 
right. f- musical fan base since like the days of the Fillmore East and the Fillmore West. I mean, when the day, like when Santana was playing with Miles Davis and, you know, you know, it was rock and jazz, but it wasn't called anything. It was what, it was just good music. And the thing is, is that the Bonnaroo fan base, yes, grew up with Fish and the Dead, sure, but they also grew up with reggae. They also grew up with punk rock. They also grew up with indie rock. They also grew up with, you know, uh, world music. They grew up with hip hop. They l- like it all. So, yeah, it was a jam band festival because that was a touchstone that was for connection, but that was only tapping a part of their personality. There was other shit in their heads mm-hmm. that was a part of it. So, Bonnaroo grew out of, uh, out, of, um, out of their love of great music. It didn't have to be tied to jam band only. Can I, when you said that uh, the Bonnaroo fans are filled with love and, and um, yeah. So, when you guys are coming up with like brand values... And you're saying Bonnaroo is about this. Did did was that instilled before Bonnaroo happened and before the fans existed, or did the fans sort of drive the brand values that you now have today? I think I would say it's a bit of a mixture. Uh, I would say starting with year one, even and up and in, including my walk through Senaru this weekend, like I am consistently blown away by these fans I meet. I mean, I'm wearing a walkie-talkie. I've got this laminate. I look like a narc. By the way, that's the only thing he's wearing. I have, that's that's I'm, I'm, I have no other us. clothes on. I have no other clothes on. It's Bonnaroo. Yeah, not Bonnaroo. I, have, I have electrical tape over my nipples. Um, it's, it's a good look, It's a good look. <laughs> no. Well, it is Cardi B no. day, so I might as well get ratchet. That's a right. So, uh, come on. Come on. So, uh, Wait to get no cover tattoo. Oh, then he, uh, is, that, is that forever? Uh, no. Do I do anything <laughs> forever? I can't commit on a t-shirt. So, a so uh, I was about to get sad. So, um, <laughs> so, so, um, but thank God I could stay happy. <laughs> I was going to call your mom. <laughs> so, uh, Hurricane oh, Linda would be so depressed. Oh my God. So Hurricane Linda. So, Linda, um, this is Ken. Yeah. You don't know me. Your tattoo. son, he needs help. Brad's in trouble. <laughs> So, um, so wait, what were we talking about? The brand people, values. Brand values. Brand values. Brand values. Right. I don't brand know values. where we're yeah. at now. So, uh, okay. That's what I do for a living. So, people um, off track. Yeah. Really off so track. I'm walking through Santa Rue and like I said, I've got the walkie talk on. I'm not, I'm not, I've, clearly I'm not a fan. I'm, although I am a fan, I'm not like, I haven't, I work here. Uh, I get high fives and smiles and thank yous and that has happened since year one and I'm always blown away by the campgrounds and I think that we responded to what the fan who the fans are in their hearts and but we also helped create guidelines um, which they do inspire for sure you know Bonnaroo a lot of festivals are like four days and out they're like they create for four days now right. Bonnaroo thinks 365 that's right. they want they, that's Bonnaroo we're is, here Bonnaroo is a state of mind we're, we're right. totally Bonnaroo is a way of life so this Bonnarooian code came out of it's kind of like the Ten Commandments it's like these are this is something that you it's how you get along on the farm this is how you get along in life but we were certainly inspired by that connection the fans had these were my first impression when I came here that in 2002 was like these are professional concert goers, professional campers, yeah. professional professional festival lovers. They already knew there was this connectivity and uh, ecosystem, which I, I said that word before, but like there was this like way they were already communing. Uh, we tapped into that, expanded on it, and you know sort of tried to cement it. Let, let me ask because we've asked Ashley this and we've asked Jeff Quayar this. From your perspective, and in fact, I introduced Brad to Ashley at Louisville at Forecastle. It was one of the more awkward moments because the first thing I Well, we've had so many, Barry. I said one one of them. so many. The first thing he says... (laughs) was the Okuru tattoo. Yeah, Yeah. that was close. (laughs) So I introduced him to Ashley. We're in the the bourbon barn there, and and first thing he says is, thank you for saving music. You said that to Ashley? Yeah, I said so, yeah. But his point, and I get it, and it's because of what this festival has done for me... What Barry's trying to say is, I'm one for subtlety. (laughs) Well... (laughs) And this is what I want to ask, because, you know, I've done this job 30 years, and then there there had become a sameness. It just felt the same old thing. After about the second Bonnaroo, it was like, now I remember why I like music, and now I remember why I like live music, and wow, there's all these different things, as you said. I don't have to just like one thing. There's all kinds of good music and all these, and I really give this festival a lot of that credit for that, and so I'm wondering... From your point, professionally, do you 
feel that as well? Well, yeah, I do feel that way. And I think the reason why you feel that way is because the founders, organizers of this festival uh, are first and foremost music fans. And they created a party that they themselves would want to attend. Yeah. Yeah, there and, you, you know, um, they've got great taste and they've got an, an, a, the most honorable of spirits in terms of uh, supporting the arts, really. Yeah, that, what you feel from that is, is you know, you're out. I'm, I mean, we're all out till three, four in the morning. Those guys, those the founders of this festival, they're in, the, they're in, the, they're in there with us. They're out there. I went to see uh, Kukugaku Moyo. Three of the festival founders were in the uh, audience with me. Right. I mean, they're Naturally that's twelve thirty. First band on. They're out there. Right. They're in this. They want it. They're, they love it. John. And they created something they loved. They created something they love, and they continue to love. And uh, you know, when you know, there's not. This is not. Uh, this is uh, this is an obvious comment. I mean, when you, if you're doing something you love, then you know. Well, then, Drew, then, everything great, becomes a lot easier. Exactly. Drew Holcomb said something. He, he founded the Moon River Festival, which AC helps with in our city in Chattanooga, and and he said we're not looking to come and take your money and take and go away. We want to have a festival that we're proud of, that yeah. that we want to enjoy. Same same kind of thing. So, I mean, it's a gathering of like minded This is a tough world. This is a crazy world. And what better experience than so, to get together with fellow humans? So and like, you now know. that we so let's catch up to today. What do you give credit to the success for this year specifically, as opposed to the last couple of years? You know, I'm I'm not really a hundred percent sure. I think it's a combination of things. It's an interesting thing that happened this year, and I will say I want to attribute it to word of mouth. I said last year that this is this is phase two. This is, I said last year is that it's season two, season two, episode one. 2018 was season two, episode one. Why did you call it season two? Because there was a transition moment where things were starting to shift into a different gear, and we were moving into new places, and it felt like something was changing. Um, and I think the word of mouth from last year fed this year because when we put up the early birds. They went faster than they've gone in a long time, and this is before announcement of lineup or mm. anything. So there was a there was a vibe this year, and Bonnaroo is about trust, and um, right. you know the reality is now people you know you can come to Bonnaroo, never step in Centeru, and still have the best week. We have of your plenty life. of people here at camp that never go in. <laughs> yeah, you can have the best. Ryan's week of your been life. to more Bonnaroo's than he's actually been to shows at Bonnaroo. <laughs> I've, I've been so. to eighteen Bonnaroo's. Well, dude, and if you eighteen if, shows, if you create Camp Nut Butter, why are you leaving? Yeah, he's a good that's, point. Yeah, look it. around. <laughs> but we're pretty happy here. I might not leave. <laughs> well, that's really interesting because we moonshine's talked about fresh. It. If you remember, all of us last year, the week of, were considering not coming. It just felt something was weird, and then we came and had probably the best year. Ever. It's funny because people are always asking me, like, how is Bonnaroo this year? I'm like, uh, it's kind of always amazing. It's always like, great. It's, a, it never, it's incredible. It's Every never it's it. never not perfect. The it, highest are, of highs, per- lowest of lows is always perfect. Yeah, and by the way, lows, when we talk lows, let's all remind ourselves that even in our lowest year, Bonnaroo is still the biggest North American camping festival. Even in our lowest, smallest year. I meant lows like I forgot the carpet for the camp. <laughs> That's my low. Yeah. I, I, forgo- I, forgot, I, you- I forgot my baby gold bond. Yeah. Exactly. Man, you it's need a, some? I've got a few a bottles tip. back That's there. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Do you get to see much? No. That's no. I, uh, I'm pretty busy during the day. I'll sometimes bust out and disappear. People are like, where's Ken? And I'm like, you know, crowd surfing. No. Yeah. <laughs> Not true. I will try to Nipple bust pasties. out. Exactly. About the pasties. Nipple pasties. Nipple I, I try to bust out during the day on occasion when I can. Sundays are better for me, and today is Sunday, so I'm able to right. hang out with you guys and not be stressed. Uh, nighttime, when the sun sets, I can get out a little bit more, but, I mean, I'm working till 3, 4 in the morning. Yeah. Just, you know, so it never really stops for me. I don't get to see a ton of music always, but I'll, I'll try to slip out, even if it's to see a song or two. That... that Season two, episode one thing is really intriguing. Where me too. Where do you think that can go? Oh man, we are headed. We are. We, there is no ceiling. You there said, is no ceiling. You said something the other day, and for people who are not here, the media area, which is where you live, basically has a tent that's air conditioning, but it has traditionally been plat, plywood floors and some folding chairs and a stage. This year, it's couches and chairs. You're and really rubbing really, this really into really people, nice. Barry. Well, <laughs> this no, is really where, first world problem. Is I overheard you telling somebody, or probably us, it only took what 18 years. Yeah, you know, um, kind of change what we're talking about. You can't rush great art. 
What are the I say that about my hair every morning. <laughs> you rush today. I. Oh. Actually, you look amazing. You look good too. Thank I mean, you. you are naked. Yes. So. Well, that's when I look my best. <laughs> what are I, the, says I, one person. This, this season two. He means by the this season world. two episode one thing. Like so, th- is it because of fish? When you kept talking about fish, and this is like born out of sort of a fish fest or whatever the name of the festival was. It sort of was born there. Uh, do you credit a, some of the success to why? Because fish is here doing three different shows. Well, I would say it's that it's almost like a homecoming almost. I, I would say uh, there's Trey now in the copter. Is that him? Uh, hey, hey, no, hey. I think fish plays a. Uh, uh, an important part of the success, no question. There's so many parts that equal the sum yeah. that creates Bonnaroo 2019. Yeah. Fish is definitely part of that equation. But the word of mouth has gone to the point where, especially like you know, guys like us who can't stop talking about it, the, the, the additions that you made to the campgrounds, the plazas, the the actual bathrooms and flushing toilets you'd think it would be like oh my god who cares but it was a major major deal well, all of these things start adding up and then no you question. Can see the writing on the wall and back to kind of what Barry was saying about my press tent or and what all the things you just mentioned every year the founders of the f- of this festival the organizers the promoters they have meetings they look all year long they're working on this thing they're looking for ways to improve it every year right. 2003 was better than 02 04 better than 03 boom 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 every year we are working on ways to make this thing better that's what you see I mean we're 18 years in and we're still perfecting it it's the beautiful thing about Bonnaroo is we are never too proud to admit that there you know the clay is still wet so that's exactly why I think I like this so much, and I like Bonnaroo so much, and they literally can just hit on this. The reason that, that exact idea of trying to do something different, trying to get a little bit better, trying to find right. new things. I do the same thing here at, at camp. We well, talk about it 360 days. I, 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 I refused to come here before you early on. <laughs> this place was a shithole. Now it's nice. Dump. What a dump. <laughs> We so we started using it, and then I do the same thing with the schedule. I try to navigate my day a little bit better. I try to, to right. find a. Yeah, little we're, by the way, in life we're all improving. Hopefully yeah. tomorrow is better than today. I mean, that's the goal. Otherwise, we should die. <laughs> yeah, but but it's nice. It's nice to have like a foundational thing with Bonner, knowing they're doing it too, and I can do it as well. When most music festivals or experiences or insert thing yeah. here, yeah. Eh, we don't know if they're going to be around very much longer. Right. Let me uh, let me ask because we've talked about it on the show and it shows up on Reddit. Eighty thousands the sellout. Is that the number you think it's? Is that the right number? Because we talked about maybe that you guys like it at sixty, maybe seventy, maybe fifty. Does eighty feel like right? You know, we have a lot of land here, so we can hold eighty super comfortably. Uh, from performances to, you know, the entertainment areas themselves to the campgrounds, eighty is a very good number where everyone is comfortable and yet, you know. There's a there's the energy of that eighty thousand. If know? I remember so, right, Ken, right. you went to to ninety maybe in two thousand four. Then never went to ninety. I we, thought they bumped. Maybe it was seventy to eighty that I'm thinking of. Is that what I'm thinking of? Yeah, we went from sixty to seventy to eighty basically. Okay, so eighty is the, pretty much the magic number. Yeah, eighty's been the top number, and that's you know, why did, it, why it feels you, great. Why did you say no to ninety? Would you not do ninety? Uh, I personally didn't say no to ninety. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> let, let, let's, re- let's remind ourselves where on the totem pole I am. Okay, yeah, that's all right. All right, N- 90 is a very nice bonus for you, I'm sure. <laughs> I just do what I'm told. Go to where I'm, I got you. you know, tell I me where you. to go. Tell me how, how to jump. When you see next year and then 2021, what do you see the changes being? I don't know what the changes. First of all, you know, because we are we're very reactive to to culture, and uh, I think Bonnaroo reflects culture reflects our culture and the best parts of our culture and we want to um, magnify that Um, so we're going to follow you know we're going to lead and follow at the same time I don't know what those changes are going to be, but it's very Barack Obama of you just now. That was very <laughs> Ken Weinstein for president. I, think he said almost I do approve this message. <laughs> look, look, look. I would think the EDM would be an example of that. Absolutely. I, would, I, I mean, would. you know, the other is a complete, you know, representative. Uh, right. It's a representation of of um, us going. Hey, what what the kids love this music, you know? Uh, I mean, um, Odessa on the main stage yesterday. Not that that's EDM, but Odessa on the main stage yesterday. Like that was one of the most beautiful. My daughter's here. She cried. I mean, that was one of the that was beautiful. That that experience. Um, there are so many cool artists out there working today. We want to support them. 
uh, and you know that goes from in all mediums, from photography to painting to music to you know we bring we're we're supporting all kinds of art down here. And you can see it in every plaza. And every the plazas, time you turn around. Every by the way, the plazas around. again. You know, there's so much thought that goes into the plazas. We want. The see, fan, I want to talk to these people. We want the fans to have the greatest experience. So we've talked about this guy. So I want to talk to uh, specific, specifically two people: the person who organizes all the plazas, the person who designs right. all the plazas, because that to me is an unbelievable job. Beautiful. That sounds beautiful. Like almost. I'm nerve wracking. I'm getting heart palpitations thinking about trying to organize an entire curate experience just for those uh, people in, inside your plaza. The other Sophie person, Lobel from C3 is the uh, Monet really? of, Monet of fan experience. All right, we need yeah, to get her. We need nice. to talk, I want to talk to her. Oh my god, I'm, I'm not love giving already. you her phone number. Yes. <laughs> the other thing is uh, the the squarch, the the new arch. The person that runs the graphics inside of I that know, room. You want that guy? I'm dying to be in that room. That's got to be the most inv- invigorating because you can change whatever you want to on the moment's notice. Totally. If you can whip something up in Photoshop real quick and throw it on the squarts, that is amazing. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, Pretty that's cool. a powerful uh, screen right there. Uh, and he's probably just sitting in a Volkswagen bus around, <laughs> around the t- By the way, I love this Volkswagen bus. It's, very it's incredible. Nice. I gotta, yeah. I'm going to take a picture from my friend Hank. He, he has one of these things. Very nice. Well, uh, be careful. There's a lot of DNA in there. Uh, <laughs> whoa, whoa. Lord, Ta- Lord Taco's had a very active whoa. life in this 41 nice. years in this bus. We have crossed nice. the line. <laughs> nice. I sat in that thing. That's disgusting. That was Bono Rude. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Very nice. How many, How many? by the way, uh, just just uh, to wrap up, how many Bono Rude? Are you going to hear from Cardi B? Over, under, and how many bottles? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's so great. She's probably hit 30. I think we should make it a drinking game. Man. Oh, that's good. There we go. Pull out the, we don't have enough moonshine, Ken. Right. We don't have enough moonshine. Very nice. Well, Very nice. yeah. She, I hope she's uh, she's got to pull that out. Absolutely. By the way, oh, speaking of which, this is what I wanted to ask you. So the, the rumors of Cardi B canceling have been rampant for, for weeks, right? Yes. And just as a process question. Yeah. What happens if Cardi B were to cancel? Do you, do you do you rearrange? Do you move? Do you try to find somebody to fill? The only time that I've really ever heard it being full uh, filled is when they got Jack Johnson to uh, to play for Mumford, uh, and that's because Jack Johnson was just you know swimming in Hawaii. He answered, he answered the phone. Yeah, he was available, and Sean O'Connell just knows him, so he just gives him a call. What happens if Cardi B cancels? Because it's not a C artist, it's not a D artist, not an A artist, but it's a B somewhere in the middle. Cardi B, uh, she's Cardi A, I think now. It's close. It's know. close. She's but, pretty A. But it, it's it's easier maybe to, to find somebody to fill her slot than maybe a Mumford and Sons at, at the time. Well, it was hard to fill Mumford uh, because they are they were headlining. That's right. The, so the headline stage, is for the B. And Cardi right. B is headlining the second stage, the witch stage. Um, the answer to your question is it sucks when you have to do it, but there are ways to do it. And, um, you know, we would have to... Uh, We've done it before. Look what Jazz Fest did with the Rolling Stones. I mean, they lost the Rolling Stones. Tough break. Tough break. <laughs> yeah. Tough but one. you know what? They, you know, you you uh, you cry for a moment and then you hunker down and figure it out. Is there like a, a a Rolodex, a plan? I mean, a plan B? You got somebody in the wings. You at least know what their schedules are, or do you wait till it happens and then you start? Yeah, I don't think you, I don't think I don't think you book the Rolling Stones and say just in case. Just in case. It's yeah. been widespread on hold. But you know, I think that. Um, <laughs> but you know where they're touring and who's not in it. Yeah. Exactly. Right. I think you just you. I don't think you ever want to think that along those lines. <clears throat> but there's I mean, not a, there's not a backup possible, plan though. It's possible because, and I, again, I am speaking way out of turn here. I don't know the okay. answer. Right. It's possible if Cardi B, if they were nervous about it, they were thinking about it recently and wondering what who That's they could slot point. in potentially. Yeah, That's a good but point. I will tell you that I've been asked this question for six weeks, and the same answer each time was, "She's coming." And I heard the same thing. So I just love the idea of like who makes the call if somebody like Cardi B were to cancel something so big like Bonnaroo. Who makes the call? Who does call go to? What favor is called in? Well, you know, you've got to start calling your agent friends and yeah. you say you send up you the got? you send up yeah. the SOS flare. Who who's, got, got? who's got the truck packed and ready? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, it's a lot. That. It's not I mean, just... look what again Jazz Fest, Cold Fleetwood Mac. Everything seemed great there, and then boom, that fell through. So you just, I think there, when you're dealing with, uh, you know, live entertainment and, uh, you, you know, you just don't know. There's a lot of X factors. I mean, who knew that Kanye West would walk off the stage at Meadows because uh, Kim, you know, had a break in in Paris. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like, I, you know, Kanye's like, uh, family first, I'm out. Which, by the way, I respect. Yeah, gotta go. And um, yeah. so, I mean, it was weird and sad and 
Again, back to my daughter. She called me crying. <laughs> nice. She doesn't cry all the time. <laughs> we bumped into Ken and his daughter on the way in here, so I appreciate you coming on a Father's Absolutely. Day. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, happy yeah. Father's Day, by the way. Hey, hey, by the way, can I say, because uh, and I'll say this publicly, because Barry Quarter means the world to me, happy Father's Day to my pseudo-dad. He's Barry. my pseudo-dad. appreciate it. Yeah. How right. many kids you got, Barry? I have Including two me and two stepkids. <laughs> what do I mean? And Brad and Brad. <laughs> yeah, everyone. All these people in Camp Nut Butter. No, Barry's great. Barry's, Barry's great because Barry will sit up all night if he doesn't go out with us, which we've gotten I got him out a couple times this week. But if uh, more more often than not, he's sitting right there on that couch with a blanket on top of him, waiting well, for all the kids to come home. Yes, I love Those that. I love that. <laughs> swear don't, to God, if don't one, bother Dad for a week. Swear to God, if one of he's these got single the flu. if one of these yeah. single people show up with like a date, oh, Barry is. Going to cut yeah, them out. The he is going to be pissed. Ah. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming. My man. pleasure, Barry. Thank I you can. for having me, Brad. Thank so, you for having so me. So excited to do, do this. Yeah, this I, I'm really honored to be here. This is. F- I love talking about this stuff. So me too. Totally. That's, why, that's why we do it. That's why we do it. Great. For free, unless you want to change that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'll, I'll advertise big hassle on He's it. He's not kidding. Thank you very <laughs> Thanks, much. Hey, hey, hey. Journey through the stories that define the artists playing Bonnaroo. Who are they? What are they? What will you see? The what? Which bands? This year? That matter. With Brad Steiner and Barry Corder.